This ain't Arby's guys, but stay tuned because just like them, we got the meat. Holy son of a gun, that's a big one. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode here at G Outdoors. Today we are indoors for now. It's one o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna be heading out fishing soon in a couple hours. Probably just head out to the back river right behind my house. But before we head out, I wanna fill up my belly. But today we're gonna do a one pot chop soup. God damn, that's a tongue twister. But one of my fondest memories growing up was at deer camp. You should come back from a whole day of hunting. Everyone's tired, they're cold and everyone kind of just threw everything in one pot, let it cook down, and it ended up being one of the most amazing things we've had. So I'm gonna try to recreate that for you guys quickly today. And with deer season approaching, it's a good way to get rid of some of the deer meat that's in your freezer, because you're gonna need to make room for the new stuff. Back it up. So today's soup, I'm actually gonna use some yellow flesh potatoes. I'm gonna use some beef broth, some vegetable broth. We got some crushed tomatoes. Unfortunately, the tomatoes in my garden aren't ready yet, so we're going with a canned crushed tomato. We're gonna use some kidney beans that were in the pantry, and some peaches and cream corn that were also in the pantry. We also got a bunch of ingredients I'm gonna throw in later on in the recipe, so you gotta stay tuned. But the pièce de la résistance, the deer meat, here I have a couple different cuts that were in the freezer. I'm just letting them defrost now. We got some uh, back straps here that's gonna be super tender in the soup. We're gonna cook it low and slow. We got some cuts around the neck as well. It's gonna be delicious. So let's get to starting the soup. All right, first things first, you're gonna wanna fill up the pot. Get yourself a big old pot. Fill it up with the broth. Here we have the vegetable. Then we got the beef. You could use any broth, honestly, whatever you prefer. But with the deer, I'm going with the beef, and then I wanna get some vegetable flavor in it as well. I'm doing half and half. Then we're gonna fill it up with some water as we go. Now we're gonna turn it on, put it to high. When it starts bubbling, we're gonna bring it all the way down. Start throwing in the potatoes, the vegetables. For the broth, obviously you can add more broth and less water, it's whatever you prefer. I know these broths are a bit salty, so I want I didn't want to overpower the rest of the ingredients. So I added a bit more water than the broth. It's still gonna give it a great flavor. Plus the ingredients that we're adding, like I said, I didn't want to take away from it. So that's why I did the ratio, but you could always tune it up to how you like it. All right, the next step I'm doing is cutting the potatoes and throwing them in the boiling pot because the potatoes are gonna take the longest to cook. So here I have about 12 small to medium sized potatoes. You could use however many you want. How you cut them also affects how long they cook. The smaller they are, the quicker they'll cook. But what I like to do, just cut them in half, and then cut them in half again, and then just dice them down. Just like that, so they're about this big. That's about the size. I do it. It's probably gonna take around half an hour. Depends on how high your temperature is for the pot. So I'm gonna get to cutting all these and we'll move on to the next step. All right guys, so we just threw the potatoes in the pot. Now they're taking a little broth bath. We're gonna probably check them every 10 minutes. We'll probably let them go for half an hour before we start adding the rest of the ingredients. As you guys saw, I also kept the skin on the potatoes. That's totally optional. Uh, you could peel them, no problem. I know we used to always just leave the skin on. We're all lazy, just cut them up. I didn't mind the taste of the, uh, the skin, so that's how I made it. It's very versatile. You can basically put any ingredients you want inside of it. If you want carrots, celery, preferably I'm not a big carrot guy, cooked carrot guy. Uh, since I was a baby, my mom used to say I used to just instantly puke. And I guess that followed me throughout uh, my life. All right, so the soup has been going for about 20 minutes. We're gonna add now the vegetables. We got some canned corn, two cans of that. We got the diced tomato with the juice. And then we got the kidney beans. I don't think I have a big enough pot. Not a problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually 
Take out some of the broth and pour it in a side bowl. And as the soup goes down, eventually over time, we're gonna add slowly back this broth because we don't want to lose any flavor. Stir this bad boy up. Oh yeah. That's gonna look good. Now we're gonna let it go down a bit for another 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna add the meat. Okay, right, so the next step, the soup has been completely turned down to low. It's gonna let it simmer for the next couple hours. So it's a perfect time to start getting ready with the deer meat. Look how beautiful this cut of meat is. Oh, you guys can see that, but it's absolutely beautiful. If there's any silver skin, I'm gonna to try to take out as much as possible, but I'm just gonna cube them up to bite-sized pieces, just like so. Cut them down to half again, just like that. We're gonna continue the process. Our deer were fortunate enough that they uh, they like to pack on the weight, these northern Canadian deer. They full of fat. We will take it. I'm not complaining with that. So we're just gonna slice them down to pieces, just like that. And we're gonna throw them in the pot. So it's been a few hours now. Time to keep adding to the soup. Right over here, I actually have some arugula from the garden. I just chopped it up really fine. I got some green onions. A couple of them were ready as well. So I'm gonna throw this in, let it all wilt down. And we're gonna actually add an herb. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to been able to harvest a couple of times already the herbs in my backyard. They've actually been regrowing, so you just cut the tops. And so far I have some basil, some parsley, some cilantro, and I actually have some dill. I think dill is gonna be a bit too strong for this. I'll probably go with some parsley. I'll grab some parsley and uh, throw it in as well. Let it all cook down. And the reason I chose the arugula is because I actually love the, the bitterness of it, the pepperiness of the arugula. So I think it's gonna go really well with some of the base flavors that's in the soup. It's gonna add a nice little punch to it, a nice little kick. I'll probably throw some chilies in as well, some crushed chilies later on just to give it some spice, some depth to it. Let's get in the pot. So now we're on to hour number three, guys, and it's slowly, slowly going down. Everything's coming out beautifully. Look at that. The meat is gonna be super tender the longer you let it go low and slow. Hopefully it's gonna be pull apart. You see all that corn, the beans, all the greens are coming out now. It's looking good. We're gonna let it go for another hour, try to enhance the depth of flavor. One hour later. All right guys, here's the final product. It's been well over four or five hours. You can let it go down all day depending on the time that you have, but I'm about to go fishing. This is where I decided to end it. As you can see on top, that's actually a poached egg. Decided to throw it on last uh, minute, last quick idea. That's the thing with the kitchen, you know? It's about experimenting. So to make the poached egg, all I did was I put it in simmering water, let it simmer down, threw in some apple cider vinegar, just so it helps bind the egg once you add it in. Then you're gonna add the egg in and let it go for five minutes. It's gonna coagulate, it's gonna fold over each other, and then you just pull it out like that. If you have outside pieces, you can cut it. That's pretty much how it looks. Let's go ahead, pop it. Oh yeah, look at that yolk, guys. Oh baby, that's gonna add a lot of flavor to the soup. I'm gonna throw in some Parmesan cheese because I'm Italian and cheese belongs on everything. And now we get to try it. All right guys, so here it is, diving in. Get some egg, some of that deer backstrap, potato. All right. Mm. Wow. That creaminess from the egg, the saltiness from the Parmesan cheese, and then that broth. I'm a broth guy. I, For me, I, if the broth is good, I could eat unlimited amount of the soup, but this broth is so dense and deep and flavorful. You get a little of that spice from the chilies, and then you get, obviously, the kicker is the potato with the 
the back strap. Oh my god. And then you get some freshness from all the uh, the arugula and then the corn too, the, the, the beans. But that broth, I could put it in a Gatorade bottle and walk around with it, you know? That's how good it is. Oh my god. I have no problem eating this all week, I'll tell you that, for dinner. I have no problem with leftovers. Anyways guys, thanks for watching. Throw down below what your favorite soup is to make and how you guys make it. But man, this is a game changer. Definitely a crowd pleaser. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and we'll see you guys next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's G Eats video. If you guys want to check out some of our other eating recipe videos, be sure to hit one of these two. If you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure to smash the subscribe down below and we'll see you guys next week.